Somebody taking the ball, the key from the centre half in the net, let's have a go. That's right. I'll tell you what, the fans who chant to the we don't like us, the we don't care. I mean, they like you here, don't they? Well, they do for now. Let's hope it continues for a long time, eh? OK, it's off and running. Let's get back to Brian Moore and Theo Foley. Thank you, Jim. Who's then attacking the goal to our right? Andy Much chasing after it. The ground staff spent the whole of the half time trying to sweep some of this water away. There's the left foot of Paul Cook finishing well wide of the Millwall goal. I think I'm right in saying the only club in the uh, whole of the league who've actually won championships in first, second, third, and fourth divisions really had a, a checkered life since those days, those palmy days in the late 40s and early 50s under Stan Cullis. And Steve Ball having to charge him back towards the top again, but charging forward and getting caught offside again. Phenomenal record he's got, though, as uh, Alan Kerbish is saying, he hasn't scored for a few games, four I think it is, but uh, his amazing record is something like 305 games played for Wolves, 205 goals scored. just the sort of clash you're going to get a hundred times in any game. But the free kick's been given to Millwall. Up to Allen. Trying to get Morley in again. And it's interesting hearing Mick McCarthy making exactly the point you'd made just before half-time, that the quality of their crosses have been a little better, then Millwall would certainly have been in the lead. That's certainly right, Brian. Uh, it's a very good observation by uh, Pi Mike. I must say that that's definitely a fact. The other thing I've noticed Ryan, is that uh, Wolves have adopted the boy down and on, on Allen now. They've elected to not let him have a free roll, because he was causing problems. Edwards playing it in. And stopped by Cooper. And then supported by Roberts. Ray had such an excellent first half in the midfield for Millwall to Ian Dawes. Phil Barber. Getting it into Jamie Morley. Play to an offside John Goodman. Getting caught offside just a little too often from both sides, actually, aren't they? What's happened is that any balls that have been laid back, they've, both teams have come up very, very quickly. Mountfield's very experienced at that at Everton, Brian. Uh, he was one of the major men in that. I don't look touch and go, I must say. Yes. It wasn't quite the angle that uh, could be absolutely sure about it, but it certainly looked a bit iffy, that decision. This really annoys me, this one here, with the goalkeeper taking the kick out. Can't believe it. Tell me why it annoys you. 70 yards out, it takes about four minutes to take. Throw to Wolves. And leave it to Kevin Ashley, former Birmingham City player. again and so Cook planted in there Ball was the first to react to it he reacted so quickly there but unfortunately for the Wolves captain and he's kicked the ball away there that might be a yellow card for Steve Ball I would, imagine, I would imagine Brian he felt that Lad Cunningham was behind him there you know that looked very very tight I said that before when they have pushed up their wall they've been very very tight at it looks very tight oh, to me that Brian. he wasn't offside at all no nope. between uh, Downing, who's already been booked, remember, and Ray. Free kick to Wolves.
deep ball. He'd gone four ball, but the whistle had gone. Actually, he's given a free kick to Wolves, and Wolves, I'm sure, would have been much happier had that game not been allowed to go on with Bull, uh, ready to challenge Casey Keller. Let's see what... This is the first real uh, free kick we've seen from this sort of position. Let's see what Wolves can do with it. Cook's left foot seems to be the potent force here. Rankin is not far off the firing line. Uh, John Martin getting the wall back 10 yards. Opportunity here for Wolves. Looks as though it might be uh, Cook who takes it. No, it's a little flick by Birch, but well gathered by Casey Keller. Cook doing well. Sliding it out here now for Ashley. No ball throw. to flip the ball to Dawes. Barber heading it long towards Goodman. Downfield. Ray again. Goodman can't keep it in play. down the left-hand side. And a corner for Wolves. Unbeaten in the league, remember, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Paul Edwards. Moving the ball for Paul Birch. The little seasons he had at uh, Villa Park. The blades up from the back. Number six. Done by Cook. Blade was right in there. Good work by Morley in an emergency right back in his own six-yard area. Touch by Ashley. Wolves having slightly the better of this second half. Goodman stabbing it away from the wall. Cook with that left foot of his trying to get Wolves going again with much on the far side, but Cunningham. Puts it into touch for a throw to Wolverhampton Wanderers. I did say, Brian, I felt that the passing by Wolves in this half would be better because the ball would hold up. I think that's very apparent now. May. That's a good pass this time from Millwall. For Dawes. It's got Goodman up, Morley up, and Allen up as well. And Goodman arriving on the far side. Problem, Brian, as well. They won't better play so many balls through the boy Allen now, because he has been man marked. And I would think that uh, the Wolves manager says you're giving him far too much space and, and respect. Now let's get amongst him a bit. I think we're going to really have a fight on here now. But it'll test Millwall's character. They're still pushing the ball around very, very well. well he won the uh, Man of the Match award from David Pleat as a co commentator. That's a little job I should have told you you've got to do a bit <laughs> later on to sort out the Man of the Match for us because he had an excellent game last week in that uh, little position just behind the front runners that uh, Charlton didn't really seem to be able to quite cope with. A throw to Wolves. I think it's about to become another wet afternoon here. 
a new cross. Dawes with the throw for Millwall. Ten minutes of the second half gone and still nil-nil. Morley. Nice little touch there for Barber. Wait for Goodman to chase, but his defence looking very secure indeed. Downfield and Blades supported by their fullbacks. Ashley and Edwards. Playing it in, Murray, the little touch, didn't quite reach Goodman and wouldn't come out far enough for Malcolm Allen. And another Millwall throw. It's back to Colin Cooper. Allen. Barber. to Mark Rankin. Foul there by Cooper on much. A free kick to Wolves. Wolves have certainly tightened the game up a bit, Brian. They're making it very hard now. Much stooping in with a header. Didn't come off. Ray hammers it away for Millwall. Two subs, Tony Dolby, and striker, and Paul Holsgrove. Goodman now for Millwall. Into the path of Barber. Morley on the far side. Content to let it go for the Millwall corner. Corner for Millwall. A little flick on, and a good flick on that by Roberts. Brilliant. Ray. It's done well. Cross comes in. And Millwall have got it in with Colin Cooper. I would say that's the only cross that Derek Mountfield's missed, Brian. It was a great cross, great quality. Great finish, and he's, he's played very, very well, the captain. His first goal of the season. And it's put Millwall 1-0 ahead. And we are Theo. He beat Stevie Bull. No, that was an amazing thing. Steve Bull was back there. Wonderful header. Got a game on now, Brian. Well, it was a game that needed that uh, breakthrough one side or the other. That was a silly challenge, mind you. Ever the conditions didn't help that challenge by Cooper. We went flying in there. He certainly got Andy much. <laughs> I remember coming down here and giving him a few smacks. <laughs> Cook with the corner with the uh, free kick for Wolves. Fair choice over it, but I would have thought this might be one that Cook curls in. Looking for somebody like Bull to race onto it, but Bull at the moment is being spoken to, and so is Roberts by referee John Martin. All right, here we go. It's Cook's free kick floated in. And okay, Mill will get it away. Thank you. Really wets it on that far side. The Millwall fans on their feet. As Wolves get another free kick. A foul on Mark Rankin. They've actually been both unnecessary for me, Brian, and, and uh, there's no need for Millwall to actually resort to that at all. I think they've played splendidly without, without having to do that. Hmm. Cook again with a free kick. 
hit left-footed again. Ball was right in there, didn't get a touch. And what was even more important is that it squirted through to Andy Much. He didn't get a touch. But uh, they get a corner. A real touch and go for Millwall, but Cook with the corner. Tease one in left-footed towards that near post, maybe for the flick on. Goodman to get it away to Malcolm Allen, lays it back for Barber, and the race is on for Murray, taking that beautifully in his stride, and he's almost being hauled back there, and then he's hauled back by Paul Blades. Now, I wonder whether the referee will consider that Murray had gone past the last line of defence and was goal, had a goal-bound opportunity there, because if he feels that, then the defender's got to go. Edwards was coming in. I would think that'd be a bit harsh, Brian. I thought the first challenge by the lad Ranky was much, was much more dubious. He actually upset him in the beginning, but uh, I think John's refereeing qualities will be tested here. It's a very dodgy one. You have to take into consideration. There was the still a lot of work. There was a lot of work still for Morley to do. To be yes. fair, oh yes, still, still a well outside well out the box. But I, as I said, if you if you go back a little bit there, Brian, I thought the the initial challenge by Ranky was was very dubious. Yeah, okay. uh, I think that's good sense prevailing. I think I think it's fair because I, I think that uh, it's been so so bad the conditions and everybody deserves credit for what's going on, including John. Nice calm head. And a free kick to Millwall. on it. Roberts turn, or rather, yes, Roberts turning it back in again. And Wolves get it away to Rankin. As the Millwall fans moved Rankin there, they realised that it was Rankin who made the most serious assault on Morley. And it was poor old Paul Blades who carried the can. I bet there's one or two people at home, Brian, a bit surprised to see that ball going out. But it's so windy, when it hits the floor, it just flies away, you know? Really does go. Let's have a look at the goal again from a, a different angle this time. Good job. Good, good job. job. And a good. Super goal. And a good cross in, though, Stevie by Stevie cut out, really, the wrong side. I don't want to preempt what you say, but I, th I would have thought Cooper's going to be very hard to not name as man of the match because he's done so well on Steve Ball, and then to get the, the one at the other end, he's trying to convince you of something, uh, Theo, I think. Sure, he should be, and he will get the mark for his bubbly. Stop by Ray. Mind you, he'd be in the running for man of the match as well. Uh, Alex Ray, who's had an excellent game in the midfield for Millwall today. Two people are reacting, and I, I think it's a shame. It's been oh, great. That's a great one. Ray. <laughs> and throw from Millwall. Leading here by a goal to nil. These are very interesting throw-ins that Millwall take, you know, Brian. They don't throw the ball long like a lot of other people do. They'll probably do it now. <laughs> <laughs> I think a 
prefer to try and get it to Alex Ray and get themselves a free kick. They're fouled by Cook. That's the way. Absolutely right. Shake of the hands, get on with the game. No intervention needed by the referee. A free kick to Millwall, quite properly given. And again, Colin Cooper up from the back. So too is Andy Roberts, the number seven. Swept in there. Might go anywhere. <laughs> uh, Malcolm Allen tumbling, the ball spinning away from him. And a goal kick for Wolves. Sure, that one wasn't worked out in the training ground, Brian. Goodman chasing. by Ray. Goodman on one side, Morley through the middle, Mountfield meeting it for Wolves. to Morley and a shot at goal. And he knew he had to use his right foot, so he thought he'd, he'd better let it go. And it was well wide. Shame that. Lovely touch the boy Allen. this time, not nearly as effective as the left. Barber gets it back. Dawes plays it here for Malcolm Allen. Cook. Cooper's header. Mountfield playing it. Straight to Morley. Goodman chasing. Blades will get there first, but a throw to Millwall. He's been outstanding, Brian, for me, Colin Cooper. I think he's been superb. He's made vital, vital decisions all the time. The lad alongside him, too. Terrific prospect. Cross coming in for Millwall, but far too close to Mike Stahl. Cooper again. Ray kept it in play. A little fall for Mountfield, planting it forward towards Andy Much. Barber. As it says a lot for those two Millwall centre backs when you think about it, that uh, prolific scorers that they are, Much and Ball. They just had one chance really this afternoon, and that came to uh, Steve Ball so early in the game. Here's Ray again for Millwall, crossed in. Needed to be pulled back a little bit where Morley and Allen and Goodman were waiting. It's a shame, Brian, because the quality of the work has been superb. There's no doubt about that. Oh, he's, he's caught the boy Ranky there. He's got up, well done. Really, I would say if Millwall's quality, of course, was just a shade better. They, they'd have at least three, four, four more goals in the bag. No doubt about it. Fancy too on the quality of their play that we saw last week and indeed are seeing this week as well. That you know they will be in amongst the oh yes, no doubt about that. Right table candidates. And uh, just to add your point on the lad Bourne, I think he'll be a good acquisition because he'll he'll threaten the positions of the front lads. Birch goes Cooper. 
as I said about Mark Cornell, he's finding life much harder now because the lad has decided to sit on him. But early on, I think they just let him roll. The lad down has done a good job on him, actually. So 20 minutes still to go. And Millwall leading by a goal to nil. And Cooper the score. Edwards. <laughs> If you don't put it out. Turned by a Cook. Stopped by Dawes. And he may bring it away. Side against Morley. What do you think, Brian? It's a very young Millwall side, you know, and uh, they must a very experienced Wolf side for Endeavour and for general play. Oh, there's a chance for ball. He's pulled it wide, the whistle had gone in any case. It was a foul, Brian, definitely fouled it. Actually, one other point I've noticed, whenever players are scoring goals easily, they don't really take snatch at things. He's snatched at the last two chances, Stevie Ball. I haven't said that, I hope he doesn't get <laughs> <laughs> But also, his scoring record, as we've oh. said, is so prolific that he's, he's done four goals without a game, and he might start getting the... Uh, I mean, you feel that's a fairly ominous sign, but on the other hand, he might himself be getting just that little bit anxious, and the crowd are giving him some stick now. He's, he's definitely getting frustrated, and, and uh, this lad here, Colin Cooper, has done superb, done superb with him, and, and as you said, he has restricted him to virtually one chance early on. Well, it's the second week running we've seen Colin Cooper, and, and I've not seen him make a mistake in either game, you know. You don't happen to be his agent, do you? <laughs> Goodman with the header. Well, nice ball played there, inviting Cunningham to come forward. And also. That's 17 minutes of the game left. up for these situations. They seem happy just to throw the ball in and have a fight. Dawes onto that left foot, which he might favour. Ricochet there beyond Goodman. Ashley trying to get it away. To no wall throw. Again, Dawes with it. the corner again for Millwall. Right. Towards the near post, a little flick on! Good grab by Stahl, just as Morley came in. Wolves are seeking to make a substitution fairly soon. Keep it well there. Cooper with a header. 
Birch trying to make something of it. Right still, Birch turning it in. And, well, ball, it came to him when he didn't really expect it. And uh, once the chance was there, he then reacted very quickly indeed. But Casey Keller, safely for Millwall. Bill still looking for this equalising goal. As Millwall come forward again. Allen being policed all the time by Downing now. And the Reeves throw. Substitution will be made now. And the Wolves are getting on with it so quickly that they can't even get the substitution made. Much chasing. I would imagine Wolves will have a goal for it now, Brian. They'll, they'll bring on, take off, as I said, one of the midfield players. Taking off, yeah, Mark uh, Rankin. I, I thought that they, they, they'll and definitely throw one up. Have on. a go. And Millwall also about to make a substitution. John Goodman is going off. And Tony Dolby, I think it is, coming on. Yes, Tony Dolby coming on. from nearby Greenwich, another 18-year-old. Barber's head on. Bush. Bull, rather. Dennison. Scored on the opening day of the season. Dennison hasn't scored since then. Lost his place, and here's Dolby getting his first touch now as the Millwall substitute. Really attacking the defence as well. There's his shot. <laughs> what a start. <laughs> again, plenty of time to get a cross in here. Roberts with a valuable header, just flicks it away. Alex Ray bringing it forward again for Millwall. He's got Morley Wade on the right, Dolby through the middle, straight into an offside position, so Ray had to keep possession there and did so very well indeed and can find Allen on the lovely play there by Alex Ray. Malcolm Allen now for Millwall. Lost in by him, Dolby couldn't quite get to it. Ray shot charge down. Balls. Now Malcolm Allen. Starting it in there again towards Morley. Both he and the fullback Cunningham going for that one. Millwall throw. 12 minutes left. That's it, the quality of the two crosses that have brought the goals have been first class. That was a fantastic cross. And they took their time in building in the build-up. Superb. I think that's it now. I think Wolves record is like Newcastle. It's gone. But here's Birch. Wolves still looking for something here. Birch with a long, long cross. Bull couldn't get on the end of it. A goal kick for Millwall. I thought he took the chance very coolly. I mean, uh, the one he got the first half, he seemed to snap out from the flick on, but that, that one, he, he knew what he was doing there. That was a great goal. Very, very good. Well, he was a bit of a make-weight in the deal that took uh, Chris Armstrong to uh, Crystal Palace in that million-pound deal, and uh, oh, well, might just have picked up a little diamond here. Still only 20, doesn't become 21 until December. But certainly over these last couple of weeks there has uh, shown a very short touch on goal. It's very nice to see a lad who, who's perhaps 
as you say, been, been more or less put into a deal like that, really blossom, and he's probably welcomed this chance. Again, he's got the pressure now with Bourne. on the face of the Wolves defenders now. You know they've just ten minutes left to pull this game around. Two down. Doors. Got a play, play on, said the referee. Took a bit of a dive by Ian Doors, actually. Andy May now for Millwall. Playing it around. Roberts. Cunningham on the right. Lovely play again up to Ray. This for play. Cunningham, the fullback, knocks it back again to Malcolm Allen. Terrific play by Millwall. A move of what? A dozen passes, I would have thought. Very inventive, opening up that defence with patience, and then with the final pass. Sadly, from Millwall's point of view, didn't quite come right for Malcolm Allen, and over the top it went. Great have it, they, they, they haven't been haven't been afraid to keep the ball at all, Millwall, and they are growing in confidence. The second goal has clearly given them a lot of confidence. Not back there by Andy May for Casey Keller. And every challenge and every tackle now will, will, will definitely be applauded. They've got plenty of heroes there, Millwall, today. But I tell you, on this sort of form, they're a match for anybody in this division, you know. They certainly are. Especially here. Especially here. Wolves throw. goal makes by everybody's confident now and everybody wants the ball and the fans applauding certainly put your mallet in. Great run, great ball. And the ball has again held up in the wind. Just over five minutes left now. Millwall 2-0 ahead. Front lights are on because the black clouds are overhead once again. Mercifully, the rain has kept off in this second half.
Tell me about the the people who've impressed you today uh, before you actually name him. Well, first of all, I've been most impressed again with, with young Roberts. I think he's been absolutely first class. I mean, when you think that he's so young, he's handled, well, arguably two of the best forwards, certainly one of the best forwards available outside the Premier League in Stephen Ball. So I've been very, very impressed with him. Colin Cooper's been superb. And, I, and uh, the midfield lad, Ray, right. Ray and, and Ray, both of them, I thought they've done terrific. And all round, Brian, I just felt I, I didn't think that Millwall would be able to push the ball around in these conditions, but they've they've proved me wrong because they have and done it splendidly. But everybody here deserves the credit for the way that way the thing's gone. So with four minutes left, do you name your man of the match now? I do indeed. Go on. I'm gonna tell you, it's the captain, Colin Cooper. I think he's been outstanding and I think his goal clinched it for me. The young man alongside him I think will learn from him and I'm very, very impressed with him. choice Theo I also live in South London by the way and that's the reason I picked uh, South London uh, the Millwall fans have applauded your decision as well Steve Bull on the ball at the moment he's gone past Cooper at this moment but Dawes is there scuttling away with the ball again not being helped by the attentions of Paul Birch four minutes left Chipping it forwards, Cooper against Bull, Here comes Keller. I must say that I don't think Steve Bull is 100% fit, Brian. I think they've actually got him to play. He's limped more as the game's gone on, which tells me he was hurt. I don't think he's put on that. Oh, he caught off balance there. saying earlier he had uh, a heel injury which kept him out of the uh, representative game in midweek well, what I'm saying Brian, is I have seen people limp when, when things aren't going well I don't think he's one of those lads no, no. I think he's, li he's limping because he's been hurt on towards Dolby Cooper. His ball goes straight to Paul Cook. Two terrific games, as you know, against Arsenal in the Coca-Cola Cup. Substitutions being made again. The second Millwall sub is coming on. Paul Holsgrove, his dad once played for Wolves. This is an old Jack Charlton trick, I think, here, Brian. Just to lay it with two minutes to go. He probably puts him on the bonus sheet. <laughs> well, it's nice for him to play against his dad's old club, mind you, yes, isn't it? lovely. Played for Wolves and for Sheffield Wednesday. To John, this is Paul. chasing the flag was up for an offside in any case less than a minute to go Out of play there. 
couldn't keep it in play, so it's a throw the wall for Hampton Wanderers being taken by Ashley. And again, played into Bull. Dulles getting it away to Dolby. Morley. And Cook gets it back. Having a right battle there and a silly battle there with Tony Dolby. And for all his promise, he's got to uh, learn not to get us involved as that. Especially when you're winning 2 0. Absolutely, and when there's just a few seconds left to play. Here's Holstrow. Little touch for Morley. Score of the second goal. Dolby on side. Being forced a little wide. Now let's see what sort of cross he can produce now because Allen's in there as well. But Stahl cut that one out. There were three Millwall players who've gone deep to the far post. A deeper cross, and that would have been goal number three. That was a silly angle, Brian. He actually could have run it right to the byline. But a good win for Millwall, one they thoroughly deserved, Theo. Yes, I, I felt as the game went on, I, they, they were the better side. They always were the team they were going to had to be beaten. Wolves started and then faded a little bit for me. I didn't commit right after the start of the second half, they did. And Millwall have been outstanding value, as indeed is everybody here to get the game on, Brian. The first defeat in the league for Wolves. They were seeking a record 13 without defeat. They've been denied that by the goals of Colin Cooper in the second half and then a fine header from Jamie Morley, the number eight there. So uh, it's a second successive week on the London Match Live. We've seen Millwall win. You get the feeling that they're going to go soaring up that first division table with the quality of the football that they've shown over these two weeks and obviously have been showing uh, all this season so far. I think we're going to try and get a word with Colin Cooper the man of the match for the way that he held on to Steve Bull so well for most of the game and of course scored that crucial first goal that uh, broke the deadlock here against Wolves today Colin's just about in place now let's get a word with the man of the match Colin Cooper Colin very well done indeed skipper and man of the match as well you must be very proud of the way your team played today yes um, it was up until yesterday you know we're sitting in eighth place and Playing on a Sunday, it's different, you know, and uh, I noticed a few teams got good results and we dropped to somewhere like 12th, so we needed something out of the game. And I thought we played reasonably well on the day, considering the conditions. I was going to say that, bearing in mind the conditions, particularly impressive the way you're still trying to play your football. Well, Mick did stress at the beginning, and there was puddles lying on the pitch, but he did say try, you know, and, uh, you know, it did get caught up in the water sometimes, but uh, I think on the whole we did quite well. And you also looked after one of the most uh, potent strike forces around, and uh, I mean, you've beaten them for the first the first team to beat them all season. Well, that's nice. Uh, you know, I read in the papers that they've been unbeaten until they come here, but um, you know, we haven't conceded many goals at the Den this season. And uh, you know, Andy Roberts has done really well deputising for Keith Stevens. And uh, I think, yeah, we play, we both played quite well, and it's very nice to win, you know. And I think Theo Foley picked you not only for your defensive qualities, but because of your goal as well. And we got a little monitor down here, you can have a little look. And uh, a super piece of work from, from Alex Ray, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, I noticed, um, you know, Alec got the ball far left, and I was sort of holding off, and I, I sort of said to myself, go on, Alec, get it in. Here and uh, there he goes. There it is, comes over perfect for you, doesn't it? He does, lovely. There he is, just coming in now. Go on, you beauty. Get in. <laughs> Lovely. And you beat three ball in the air there as well. Nice. This is going to take a heck of a good team to beat you here, isn't it? Well, like I say, um, last season was a bit different. We, we conceded a few too many goals that uh, Mick wanted to uh, put right this season. And uh, on the whole, I think, we, I think we've only conceded four goals at the end of the season, so, you know, Mick will be looking to keep it going. Well, that's a fortnight, two weeks running, that you've uh, pleased a lot of people watching on the London match. I'm sorry we couldn't warm it up for you, that one. But there you go, the old bark is bubbly.